Why does the Earth have seasons? It seems a simple question. Why do we have winter, spring, summer, and fall? Humanity has lived with these same seasonal patterns for its entire existence. But why do we have seasons? Uh, I think it's um, the Earth's placement based on its uh, close, its distance to the sun. So I know that the Earth doesn't spin in a perfect circle. It doesn't orbit in a perfect circle. It's like kind of an ob like an ovalish shape. I think it also has to do with like um, Kepler's first law, where it states that, um, like, I don't know, say like the Earth like travels around the sun in elliptical shape. Like, I'm guessing like as it gets closer to the sun, it's like hotter seasons like spring and summer and then as it gets like farther then it's like colder seasons like autumn right. and winter. Well this certainly seems a logical answer. When the earth is close to the sun we get summer and when it's a little further away we get winter and in between when the earth is a medium distance away from the sun we get spring and fall. But there's a problem with this. It's winter in the US and summer in Australia. That might be different depending on what time of the year you're watching this video but the seasons are always flipped in the northern and southern hemispheres. If it's winter in the northern hemisphere, then it's summer in the southern hemisphere, and vice versa. And the same goes for spring and fall. But why? Well, we have to change our model of the seasons. The distance from the Earth to the Sun doesn't affect the seasons. If that were the case, then the entire planet would all be in winter, then all in spring, then all in summer, and then all in fall not flip like it is now, the different hemispheres experiencing different seasons. So what is the real reason for the seasons? Um, I would say, isn't it like the, the tilt of the Earth like on its axis, I think? I know that the Earth is tilted on axis. I know that has something to do with it. Well, something about the axis of like, that it's on, <laughs> like the way it rotates. Well, you know, if the north or the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, then it's summer and it's winter for the southern hemisphere because it's farther away and then when it's the opposite when it goes you know then it's the opposite way around and like the in-between is like the spring and the fall. The earth's tilt is responsible for the seasons. We all know the earth spins around but the earth spins at an angle at a tilt. So we'll say this is the earth and this is the axis it spins around. Yeah. It spins like this. It spins at a 23.5 degree angle which means that, so if this is zero degrees, you know, this would be 90 degrees, mm -hmm. it's 23 and a half, and that's how it spins. Mm -hmm. So as it comes around here, then the southern hemisphere is, is tilted towards the sun, and you know, then you get fall and, and spring and everything. So around here, it's summer in the north, winter in the south. Mm -hmm. As it orbits around, it's still spinning around. It gets here, it's fall. And on this side of you, you see, the, su the southern hemisphere is, is pointed towards hmm. the sun. So it's, Til it's tilted away because it oh. orbits around like this and that's what's causing the seasons different parts of the planet facing the sun at different angles oh okay yeah. oh wait so that's why like down under and stuff like the the seasons are like flipped right so <laughs> that makes so much sense it'll be summer. wait so do they like summer in, or christmas in summer there or something yeah so that's why in New Zealand, like, you'll see Santa Claus wearing flip-flops or something, oh my God. which is a real thing. So the seasons are controlled by how much and what part of the Earth is facing the sun, not by the distance of the Earth to the sun. The distance from the sun really plays no effect on the seasons. Oh, really? But the distance from the Earth to the sun does vary over time. All planets and bodies orbit in ellipses, and the Earth does too. At its closest point, called the perihelion, the Earth is about 91.4 million miles away from the Sun. And at its furthest point, also known as the aphelion, the Earth is about 94.5 million miles away from the Sun. When in the year do you think the um, perihelion is? When do you think the Earth is closest to the Sun? I would think it would be during the summer. Uh, I guess summer, really. <laughs> or summer? What might surprise you is that the perihelion is in January. The Earth is closest to the Sun during January. So in the Northern Hemisphere, even though the Sun is closer in January, January is still one of the coldest months. It's just because the Northern Hemisphere is tilted away from the Sun that we get winter, even though the Sun is a little bit closer. The perihelion, when the Earth is closest to the Sun, is during January. Mm -hmm. So. But that's when it's cold right. for us. The perihelion and aphelion, they don't really have an effect on the seasons. 
Okay. So the Earth does get closer and further away from the sun, but that doesn't affect the seasons. Oh, interesting. It's really that tilt that is getting more sunlight on one part of the Earth oh. that causes the seasons. So it has no, so the closeness ha really has no effect. It has very little effect of any. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quick side note. Remember how I said that the Earth has a 23.5 degree tilt? Well, it hasn't always been that way. The Earth processes slightly, or wobbles around as it moves around the Sun. Now, the Earth's tilt will change between 22.1 degrees and 24.5 degrees over the course of about 20,000 years. So, yeah, it only moves a tiny bit over the course of thousands of years. Our Moon is actually responsible for keeping Earth's tilt pretty stable. If we didn't have the Moon, another planet or asteroid could orbit by Earth and tug on it with gravity and throw it out of alignment. But because the Moon is a pretty big object and pretty close to Earth, it keeps that tilt stable. Another side note, different planets experience their own seasons too, and they all have their own tilts. For example, Uranus has a tilt of 97.7 .7 degrees, meaning that it has extreme seasons. So you have extreme seasons in Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> During parts of the year, one hemisphere will be pointed pretty much directly at the sun, and the other hemisphere will be completely in the dark. The point when the northern hemisphere is at its maximum tilt towards the sun is called the summer solstice, or the winter solstice if you're in the south. And on the other hand, the point when the southern hemisphere is at its maximum tilt towards the sun, that is the summer solstice in the south and the winter solstice in the north. Similarly, when exactly the same amount of sun is shining on both hemispheres, that is the spring or fall equinox. And that happens when the Earth is here or here. The summer solstice in the northern hemisphere is when the Earth is at its maximum tilt towards the sun. So if you're the sun... Wouldn't that be the middle of summer, though? That's a good question. So you would think the hottest day of the year would be the summer solstice. That's when most of your hemisphere is facing the sun. Naturally, you would think that that would be the middle of summer, but it's not. Summer starts on the summer solstice. So the summer solstice is like June 21st or around there. And huh? <laughs> it seems like this should be the middle of summer when it's at its maximum tilt. But it's not. Oh. But the hottest months of the year are July and August, after the summer solstice. So why is this? Why are July and August hotter if they come after the solstice, when less of the northern hemisphere is facing the sun? Uh... Um... Um... The Earth is preparing itself for the hottest... No, I have no idea. The reason has to do with something called seasonal lag. Seasonal lag is pretty much what it sounds like, the seasons lagging behind when they should be. The reason is that water is very good at retaining heat, and 71% of the Earth is covered with water. So after the summer solstice, as the tilt towards the sun lessens a little bit, the water in Earth's oceans continues to release heat. The water has trapped that heat and releases it over time. And the same is true for winter. During December, the oceans still have a little bit of heat to give off from earlier months, but come January and February, most of that heat has run out, so the oceans can't warm the air and you get the coldest months of the year. So this means the temperature we would expect on any given day is shifted. The amount seasonal lag shifts the seasons from the temperatures varies on place to place. For example, in Fairbanks, Alaska, where it's pretty close to the North Pole and the ocean's pretty far away, seasonal lag doesn't really play a big role. So the hottest temperatures appear just a couple weeks after the summer solstice. And likewise, the coldest temperatures appear just a couple of weeks after the winter solstice. And in the other extreme, places like San Juan, Puerto Rico, where it's close to the equator and surrounded by ocean, the hottest month is September, nearly three months after the summer solstice. And late February and early March is about as cold as it gets, months after the winter solstice. So you might think, what's the point of even having seasons? I mean, is there really a purpose they serve to humanity? Yes, the Earth and everything on it has adapted to the way it is for millennia, and that includes seasons and temperature and climate. Our planet is a very, very intricate machine. So many moving parts. Ocean currents, wind currents, the ozone layer, our magnetic field, the moon, tides, concentration of different gases in our atmosphere, clouds, rain, snow, keystone species in different ecosystems, the intricate food chain, ocean acidity, climate, seasons, and literally thousands of other things. If just one of those is thrown off, the Earth 
starts to fall apart. So as humans, we have to do everything we can to ensure that seasons and climate stays consistent with what we've experienced for the past thousands of years. Earth is our only home. Protect it. The Earth is actually furthest away from the Earth in summer. The Earth is the furthest away from the sun in summer. <laughs> Would you like to say any uh, last remarks? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm going to use that at the end of the video. <laughs>